I'm Eagles insider Dave Spadaro with linebackers coach Ken Flagel, presented by the Rothman Institute at Jefferson, as the Eagles get ready for Sunday's game against the L.A. Rams. And Ken, they say that this scheme that Sean McVay is running is a, an innovative one. Uh, what are some of the particulars about the Rams offense and the X's and O's as you get ready for them? Well, I think, number one, they complement it, uh, Dave, with a lot of good skill positions, uh, good skill players, I should say, number one. So they make it uh, a very challenging way from just an athletic standpoint of matching up. But I think the thing that makes them unique is they have what we call a lot of distraction type plays where they've got a lot of guys swapping behind the line of scrimmage and particularly in the run game, they try to get you looking at things you really shouldn't look at. Uh, and get you to play a little bit softer in the run game. Sometimes you lose coverage because guys swap behind the line of scrimmage. So you really got to be very disciplined in your assignments. You've got to be good about training your eyes. They got to be where they need to be because if you don't, then you'll get out of your gap in the run game or you might get behind on your coverage and that's where they expose you. Is it difficult for a player to be disciplined and at the same time be aggressive? I think so. Uh, I think it all just comes down to we always talk about eye control. Uh, whether you're playing linebacker, or DB, or even defensive lineman. So it comes down to that. And uh, if we can execute and do those things, then we'll have a good matchup against them. How special is Todd Gurley? They're running back 1,500 combined yards. Dangerous, obviously, running the football, but also as a receiver. No question. Uh, I think right now he's their second leading uh, targeted receiver on the football team. So they, obviously the quarterback has a lot of confidence in throwing the ball to him. Uh, but he's a great running back in the run game. And the thing that has impressed me about him is just how patient of a runner he is, number one. He allows things to develop in front of him so he can hit creases. And he runs uh, very physical behind his pads. If you just try to arm tackle this guy, he'll run through arm tackles. You have to get your feet and your body in front of him and, and uh, you have to get population to the ball. That's the other thing on defense because he's a hard guy to get down. Tim Schwartz earlier in the week compared some of the things that he's seen with Jared Goff to some of the things that Kirk Cousins does with Washington. A lot of boots, movement. So is that part of the discipline you're talking about? Yeah, no question. And uh, and it goes a little bit further than that. I think, uh, you know, when Sean McVay was at Washington, I'm sure uh, the head coach had a big influence on the offense. Now, they haven't uh, strayed too far away from that. But you can see that he's got his own personality in this offense now. I think they're a little bit more uh, wide open. Uh, and they do a, uh, a few more things than we've seen from the Redskins. That doesn't mean that the Redskins scheme isn't good. It just means it's a little bit different, and I think it's the offense now is starting to come around to being a little bit more like uh, the head coach's personality. Ken, what's it been like for you? You are a teacher. You've got your linebacker group here in a, in a foreign environment. What's it, <laughs> how's it been for you? Well, it's been great. I mean, obviously the organization did a great job to make this transition from staying out here this week as seamless as possible. You know, you, you, you try to preach on staying on your routine, and I think Doug, uh, our head coach, has done a nice job that way. We're not really getting away from uh, of how we do things and the timing of how we do things. You know, you see we come out for our walkthrough. We had our meetings in the morning. Uh, we'll come out, we'll have our afternoon practices, we'll have our post-practice meetings where we get a chance to review the tape. So we're staying on schedule, although we're in a different environment. So we're trying to make it as seamless as possible. And uh, again, the organization's done a nice job. I think the players have been very well accommodated where we're staying. As I segue to schedule, it's December playoff atmosphere football games. Does that mean it's different than an October game, a September game? Well, every game's important, as you know. But again, uh, when you get a little bit closer to the finish line and you start looking around, you see who's chasing you or who's ahead of you, uh, it, I think it puts a little bit more importance on it. I think guys understand now that if you're going to be good in January, you really have to hit your stride in December. And I've been on football teams that maybe didn't have as good a record as we have here at this particular time. But if you play well at the end of the year, you can carry that momentum into the playoffs. If you're not playing well at the end of the year, meaning you know, you kind of limp into the playoffs, you get in, it's hard to generate that kind of momentum to play playoff teams, and particularly if you've got to go on the road to beat those playoff teams to continue to play on a, a, you know, through the course of the tournament. So I, our hope is, is again, that you know, we, can, we can put the Seattle game behind us right now, get back to playing Eagle football, and really uh, hit our stride and build momentum and be a hot team in December. Let's play some great Eagles football on Sunday. Ken Flagel. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. Presented by the Rothman Institute at Jefferson.